so when I um, went to see Jupiter ascending, I was interested to see what the what the symbolism was, what the themes were in terms of the plot. Now, to be absolutely honest, I mean, I didn't find the film that riveting, really, from a, a viewing point of view. Um, maybe it's just me, but, you know, over the last, um, God, decades now, it seems, there's been film after film after film after film with the same basic background, the same basic plot, which involves alien takeovers or um, police state takeovers. And whether it's alien takeovers or police state takeovers, the, the, the police state or Orwellian society is always a backdrop to these movies. And um, there is this um, whole concept of predictive programming. And one of the reasons that we're getting all these movies, one after the other, with the same theme, the same backdrop of the Orwellian fascist dictatorship in whatever form it takes, um, the reason we're being given that, or one main reason, is to make us familiar with it. Because um, when you, you realize that that very society is not only what is desired to be imposed upon humanity, but is actually being built all around us, not even by the day now, by the minute, um, then you realize that there's more to at least most of these movies than just a bit of entertainment. And what predictive programming does, it makes you familiar with something. Now, overwhelmingly, that will be uh, subconscious. Um, but when a society is coming in, that is, to use that word again, alien to what has gone before. And someone of my age coming up to 63, I well remember what society was like before all this stuff started happening. Then there is a resistance through unfamiliarity of this society that's being, not even slowly now, imposed upon us. What's going on? What's going on? But the more you can get people familiar with it, even in a subconscious way, but they somehow, uh, it's not as alien to them as it would be without that. The more likely you are to reduce to the greatest extent you can resistance to it. I mean, there are many other ways to stop and dilute resistance to it, but this is one. And so when I watch this uh, Jupiter ascending, um, I expected the, the same thing, either alien or police state, or both um, being imposed upon humanity. But what I got was, um, I mean, I was sitting in the, the movie theater, just shaking my head and chuckling, really. I mean, the, the, the themes of it were out of my books, I'm not saying they were literally out of my books, but the same themes are in my books going back well over two decades and these themes are um for instance one of the one of the um one of the cast on jupiter ascending um is quoted as saying that it's like a cross between the matrix and star wars and if you read my books then what i'm saying is in effect what we are experiencing and the controlling force behind what we're experiencing is, I, I could say, a kind of mixture of The Matrix and Star Wars in this sense. The Matrix, in the way that we are, as I've explained at length elsewhere, um, we are downloading all the time um, an information source, just like a computer, downloads information and puts a visual representation of that on the screen, even though it's not like that at all. You know, I mean, there's not pictures and, um, and graphics and words on the information that the computer is decoding. It's computer codes, it's information codes. And the computer decodes that 
into what we see on the screen. Well, what we're doing with this fake matrix, this fake reality that we think is real, is we're decoding information in, in the, the, basically the same way, and we are manifesting in our visual and other senses, decoded by the brain and indeed the whole genetic system, um, a reality that we think is real, but isn't. And this is why you have this apparent contradiction between the mass of what we call science um, studying the world in its so-called and apparent physicality and at the same time you have quantum physics showing that there is no physicality because what mainstream science in almost its totality is doing is studying the illusion thinking it's real and what quantum physics is doing is studying the illusion at least one level of it so that's the matrix part of this mix the star wars part of this mix is that there is a non-human force that's behind the creation of this fake reality. That is manipulating our perception of everything, including self and reality and life. So that we unknowingly are slaves and servants to that force. And what I saw in Jupiter ascending is that very theme that I've been writing about all these years. Well, Big Brother moves on again this week, or more like Big Sister in Britain, in the form of uh, Home Secretary Theresa May, who has announced more anti-terrorism uh, measures. And you'll remember in the wake of 9-11 in uh, North America, Britain and other countries, a great swathe of anti-terrorism uh, legislation uh, came in in which the definition of what was meant by terrorism, terrorists, terrorist activity, was so ill-defined and uh, so lacking detail in the definition of what the law was targeting, that those uh, laws could be used across the, uh, the society in general. And they were, and they have been. Uh, we have had some extraordinary examples of the way in uh, Britain that anti-terrorism legislation has been used to um, to keep surveillance on people and and be used against people who are absolutely nothing to do with terrorism I'll give you an example um, one local council used anti-terrorism legislation to keep surveillance on um, a couple to make sure that they did live in the catchment area of the school that applied for their child to attend. And this is what has been going on. And so when something comes out and someone makes a speech like Theresa May this week and says, you know, these are new laws uh, against terrorism, terrorist activity, or this, this new word now, the laws against extremism, define extremism. Uh, uh, exactly. And so the, the laws that they are bringing in, the new ones announced this week, are designed in just the same way uh, to be applied to the, the, um, the population in uh, general. And very much um, to people like me and, and, and others who are exposing the, the scams and the conspiracies involving governments and all the rest of the, the networks of deceit. And I'll get into that as we go along. And, you know, when you look at uh, this whole kind of subject area, what's happening in Ferguson, Missouri, with the, the, the protests, uh, uh, which of course have, have gone nationwide in the United States and, and even uh, manifested in, in, in London too, uh, too, 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 too. And um, 
So it's vital that we see how the dots connect, to see how the scam is unfolding, to take away more and more and more of, of our basic freedoms uh, for free expression, free speech, free perception and free opinion. All these are being targeted by anti-terrorism legislation. And um, this is a newspaper report on Theresa May's stuff this week. Universities will have to ban hate preachers from speaking on campus under a crackdown unveiled yesterday by Theresa May. Once again, we're looking for definitions. What defines a hate preacher? Some of it can be obvious. They're preaching hatred against people and, and, and preaching uh, violence against people and war against people. Yeah, you can you can see that. but. Unless it's absolutely defined, you can then start to uh, widen that. So governments say, well, this person exposing this politician or exposing this uh, scam uh, and conspiracy within government is preaching hatred against government, hatred against government ministers. And it could it very easily be, uh, be widened to do that and, and is. I mean, the, the examples are there um, endlessly from previous uh, uh, legislation claiming to be against terrorism. Schools, colleges, prisons and councils will also be ordered to put in place anti-extremism policies. Okay, define extremism. Again, well, you, you, can, you can define it in a small area, uh, although they don't, uh, but then you can widen it. Well, is someone that says, uh, 9-11 was an inside job. Are they extremists? Well, that's the idea, to move this and use this legislation to um, bring about a situation where that is precisely the case. So um, conspiracies uh, and exposing conspiracies, having an opinion about conspiracies will eventually be considered extremism and thus banned. This is where it's leading, and this is why we need to keep our eyes right on the ball with all this, because it's very clear, and there are past precedents, like I say, that, that show that this is just the foot in the door.